walked in a battle with a chosen few. Argue some ridiculous philosophy. Separate from me from me. June brings sweet escape. I'm free like Virginia, my jump the state. Another round of servitude. Clothed where my mind is new. High mountains of endless seas, he'll never reach me. Sky screamers may try my mind, but I know that I am built to fly. Shackled to the road that lays underground. Chained to the wheel, I run around and round. But I am like dead of mine. Last through with a glimpse of light. I rise like Superman. I know where I am. High mountains over endless seas. You'll never reach me. Sky. So I like superheroes. <laughs> if you're listening to <laughs> thanks very much. Well, you know, I was listening to that song and I, and I wrote it really because I have this love for superheroes. And I would say that I'm obsessed, but it's not like that kind of obsession, like, you know, where if we got together afterwards, I could tell you all of their alter egos or where they lived or their names or anything like that. I've always loved the idea of a superhero because they just seem awesome. You know, they're brave, they, they do shit. Superheroes are awesome. And I, I have to just kind of make a confession. So they asked me to come up and speak on courage. And I was like, yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. But like maybe now's the time to tell you that I'm a fraud. Because <laughs> I was like, I kept thinking about the whole idea of courage, you know, and these three questions kept popping up into my head. Who? What? Where? You know, like, who? who? Who am I to speak about courage? You know, what have I done that's courageous? Where do I even find courage? You know, sometimes I would have to admit to you that things can get to the point where the most courageous thing that I do is wake up. Right? So I feel like how can I speak to you about courage? And I think like a lot of people will think like, you know, I'm the perfect person to speak about courage because I've had a lot of crappy things happen. And so, and I'm still here. And maybe, maybe that is the definition, you know, but actually, like I looked up the definition, Webster's, and um, let's see. So courage is the day by day, moment by moment intention to move forward and do something or things that scare the shit out of you. 
Okay, I'm going to be honest that that Webster didn't really say that. <laughs> I just thought of that myself. But Webster could say that, right? Because I think that is what courage rises out of, this intention. Every day, every moment, we can make a decision. And just because you have courage right now doesn't mean you're still going to have courage later on today, tomorrow. Courage is something that keeps bubbling up sometimes if, you, if you're lucky. And you have to constantly choose and hope for courage in every moment. And I feel that if I do have any qualifications to be up here talking to you about courage, it's that because of all of the crappy things that have happened in my life and the fact that I'm still here on stage with a big ass smile, <laughs> maybe I figured out some things about courage. And I think one of the, the ways that I've really like incorporated courage into my existence is just by like convincing myself that I'm a superhero. Um, and I could really say that I am because I've been hit by lightning. And that's how you get superpowers. If you Google my name, it says Kelly Lee Evans, lightning. So I've been hit by lightning and it's every time I meet somebody and they hear that story, they ask me either if I have superpowers or if I play the lottery. <laughs> I think it's, it's not so much in the, obviously in the action of being hit by lightning, but it's more in the living around that in other situations that I've been able to find my superpowers. So I wanted to take a moment to share some of the things that I've learned with you and maybe you'll help, it'll help you to discover what your own superpowers may, may be. So, my first superpower is... <laughs> I am a super liver. No? <laughs> I know, it's exciting, right? So the whole idea for me of being a super liver is that I've had to realize by almost dying, by seeing other people almost die, that life is really, really short. Like, really short. So let me just tell you a little bit about my story. So I grew up in Scarborough. Shout out to Scarborough. Yay, Scarborough. Nobody really says, yay, Scarborough. <laughs> but they should. So I grew up in Scarborough to a single mom. My mom came from Jamaica, to, from Jamaica by England in the, I think, the 50s, 60s. And she was really awesome. You know, like, I think she was really, really, really awesome. But I have to admit that, like, she had, like, she was really, really strict. And she kind of gave me these three, three goals for life. I could either be a lawyer, a doctor, or an engineer. That's it. And I think if anybody here has immigrant parents, they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Those are your choices. And so, I mean, that was all I really could do, you know? And I always wanted to sing. I had this dream to sing. But I also, like, really didn't like to, like, I didn't like conflict, and I didn't like my mom being upset. And so I learned really early to just make everybody around me happy. And the first thing that I did was go to university. I came here to Carleton University here in Ottawa. And I took an undergraduate in legal studies. And I took another one in English literature. And I started my master's, you know, um, in legal studies and studying legal philosophy. So my whole idea was I was just going to stay in school as long as possible just so they could keep them off my back. But all of the time, like right under it, was this, like, this little river of wanting to be creative. I would paint. I would sing here and there. That's what I really wanted in my heart. But I wasn't going to get... I wasn't going to go crazy and think of like actually following that path. My dad was his PhD in biochemistry. There was no way that I could be a musician. And it really wasn't until my mom, when I was about, I'm trying to remember the age, I think about 23, 24, she was diagnosed with multiple myeloma, which was like a horrible, horrible cancer that, of the plasma cells that just took her down in such a, a quick succession, and I got a chance to see, really, as a young person, how short life is. And, you know, even after she died, I still kept at it. I still thought to myself that maybe I can, I can do this, maybe I could continue doing my schooling. But I just, my heart wasn't in it. And I also had these horrible, horrible ulcers. Because, like, what I didn't mention to you when I was talking to you about why I was a fraud is that I am scared all the time. Like, I, I live in fear. I'm afraid of everything. 
<laughs> I could, I'm pretty, I'm afraid of, not really, no, I'm not really afraid of you. Because <laughs> this is like what I'm used to now. You know, this is my job. I, I get up on stage and I talk to people. But I'm, always, I'm afraid of failing. I can be afraid of succeeding. Um, afraid of, you know, following a path that may be the wrong path. Following a path that might be the right path and leads to something that I can't handle. Um, afraid of telling you what I want. Afraid of telling you what I don't want. Afraid that you might get angry at me. Afraid that I might be angry at you and kill you. No. <laughs> fear. All the time. And I had no idea how fearful. <laughs> How fearful I was all my life, you know? And this whole, this whole life led to me having ulcers since the time I was 14. And I didn't have any understanding that that was like my fear and my anxiety just kind of moving through me. And the craziest thing ever was when I dropped out of school, oh, I didn't get to that part, right. <laughs> so my mom passes away and I have these horrible ulcers. I've lost my voice. I have vocal nodules. They told me that I shouldn't speak for a whole year. I've got a one-year-old baby who won't sleep. I'm trying to finish my master's thesis. I'm going out of my mind. And I go to visit this guru, and she says, put it out into the universe and ask what you should do. And I was like, okay, crazy lady. <laughs> but on the way home from seeing her, I did just that. And I got back this message, this overwhelming message that I would be okay. That even though everyone was telling me that I needed to finish my degree because my mom up in heaven was gonna want me to have, you know, a, a master's, I realized that, mm, nah, I don't, I don't buy it. I just don't buy it. Because if there is a heaven, then she knows that I'm not doing well here. And that, and if there's no, and that, 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 that it doesn't matter. And if there's no heaven, then she doesn't give a shit anyways. So, I'm going to drop out. And that's what I did. I dropped out, and it was the best thing that I ever did, best decision that I ever made. Except, because of the kind of luck that I had, more things happened. So, I made this huge list of all these things that I wanted to do in life. One of them was to play tennis, because I'd never really done anything for myself. All of a sudden, I dropped out of school. My dad stopped talking to me for five years. And I had all this freedom. I no longer had anybody to make happy. And on the list, I said, oh, I want to learn how to play tennis. So I went off and I was playing tennis and, you know, I went kind of a little bit too long and I had an ankle rollover. And I heard the pop. I don't know if you've ever heard the pop. Nobody here has heard the pop. <laughs> it's the most horrible sound ever. I went to the hospital and they prescribed me Advil. And it turns out I'm allergic to Advil. And I ended up back in the hospital a few hour, about an hour later, blown up like a balloon. And I realized, with help, my ex at the time said, you know, that ball could have hit you in the throat. What were you doing playing tennis? And I thought, he had told me that I thought you always wanted to sing. And so I kind of just said, you know what? He's right. And when I got out of the hospital and I was home, I had all these books of, like, on how to write songs, and I ended up writing the music that became my first album, which was nominated for a Juno. And I'd never written songs before in my life. And I was in my 20s. And that was my first realization that, you know what? I can actually do whatever I want. I could. So that's when I realized that it's okay to drop out. You can drop out. I'm actually telling you all to drop out. <laughs> If there's anything, and it can be anything, it doesn't have to be like, you know, like if you're, if you're a creative person and you're just creating in an area that you don't really want to create in, drop out. If you're not creating but you want to be creating and that's why you come here to be around other creatives, drop out. Figure out the way that makes the most sense to live your life now. That's how I became a super liver. I'm also a super listener, honestly. I, about 2013, I realized that I was really, really, really good at listening to everybody else, never to myself. And I decided that I was going to 
listen to that little voice inside me. So for most of 2013, you know, from January to June, I didn't listen because that's what I do. I listen to everybody else but myself. And I was kind of thinking to myself, you know, this is, this is crazy, but you know, I just, I, you know, I just, I don't really know how to pull this off. And then the universe helped me out. How? I got hit by lightning. Now, how did this happen? I was in the kitchen and I was washing the dishes. So I lived in the country. We had a big house with a big steel roof and I was doing big things you're not supposed to do when there's a big storm. Barefoot in front of a window, hands wet, a sponge. I wasn't on a cell phone, but I could have been. <laughs> and my son came to me and he said, Mom, you know, it's, I'm really scared. There's like this huge storm, I'm really scared. And I was like, ah, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We have storms like this all the time. And 30 seconds later, the storm hit, the lightning hit the house, and I got the charge up through the pipes. And I guess through the sponge into my body and it changed my life forever. But what I didn't tell you guys and what I often don't tell you is that right before the lightning strike, I heard a voice. I'm not crazy, <laughs> but I do hear voices. I heard this voice and it said, Kelly Lee, leave the dishes for now and go and sit on the couch. And I was like, no, I'm good. I'm going to go. I'm just going to just finish up here. Because my whole thing was like, I'm hearing voices, you know? <laughs> like, I'm going to listen to a voice. So, like 30 seconds into that, boom. And my life was changed forever. And I remember lying there afterwards thinking like, what the? What is that? Because, like, I mean, if there's going to be a lightning storm that's going to affect your body, that's going to put you in a wheelchair for a few months, that you're no longer ever going to feel the same about. I think if I'm going to hear voices, I want it to be like, Kelly Lee, get down! <laughs> you're about to be hit by lightning! <laughs> That's the kind of voice I want to hear. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> but I found out through that experience that you pretty much never hear voices like that. You get these nudges. These nudges. This, well, why don't you bring that with you? Could be an umbrella, could be um, a book, could be an idea. All of a sudden, you're out in the street and there's a storm, or there's a wait, or something happens where you needed that thing that you didn't listen to and bring that thing that was there. You get nudges. I get nudges all the time, but I'm so used to always saying, ah, oh, I'm good. And I realized from that experience that I had to listen. But it wasn't like I actually started listening right away. I still had to keep having these experiences, even through that. I remember once I was staying at this apartment in, in Paris, and it was the kind that you locked on both sides with the key. And I, at that point, I was in a wheelchair, and it was really hard for me to get around. And I took the key with me. And I had a nudge to leave the key in the door. But I was like, nah, that's OK, I'm good. And somebody knocked on the door. And I couldn't remember where the key was. And so I'm crawling around the, on the ground trying to find the key. And that was just a reminder. Just listen to the nudge. It's not that big a deal. And a lot of times, it's small things. You know, it's little things that you don't think matter, but could be huge things. And what I've learned is when you listen, when you learn to listen to the, the nudge on small things, you also listen on the big things. So it's kind of cultivating this relationship and listening to your inner voice ahead of time. Because as my mom used to say, if you can't hear, you'll feel. <laughs> Usually that would be before you, get, you got a whooping. But, <laughs> but that's what I've learned. Like Life keeps giving me these whoopings. And I need, to, I need to listen. So that's why I've been cultivating this superpower of listening. The last superpower that I am getting really good at is loving. I am a super lover. <laughs> Which like, never sounds good when I say it on stage with a microphone. I'm a super lover. It's bad, but it's true. But I always, like, I think people, whenever they think about who, if you know me you, and you've known me for a while, you generally think, oh, Kelly Lee, she's so nice, she's so positive. 
And that's true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But I think like I think my positivity and my niceness is developing, it's maturing, it's 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 not the same as it was before. Because before I loved everything except myself. So I was really, really good at finding the good things in other people, even when they maybe didn't deserve for me to find the good things in them. You know, keeping toxic people for much longer than they needed to be around, thinking that I could change people, thinking that I could mold, right? To the detriment of loving myself. And that's like the corniest thing that I could possibly tell you. Here, you need to love yourself. It's corny, but it's so true. It's so true. So one of the things that I've had the pleasure of learning over these past few years, since like my first, well since, I mean if I made a list of all the wonky things that happened to me, you'd be like, oh, Kelly Lee. But I don't think I'm that unique. I think we each have stories. I think we each have a list of wonky things. And it's so amazing that we're all still here. So when I, look at loving and learning how to be a super lover. I look at the things that help me build positive feelings about others and about myself. So one of the techniques that I use is uh, I write love lists. What's that, you ask? A love list is uh, it's kind of like taking an object and Finding things to love about it. Could be a person, could be a thing, it could be an experience. And you can make a love list about anything. Right? So, like, okay, I'll make one about here. I love red seats. I love the color red. I love that these seats look so comfortable. I love that they're on an angle. You know, I think that would be really comfortable to sit in and to see the show. I love the lights. I find that their lights are at a comfortable level. I really, really love um, the feeling in this room today. I love how people have gotten together this morning. Um, I love that there's a set behind me. It feels like the stage is alive in its own way. You know, I love all the smiling faces. I'm, I'm just built, like, I don't know how you're feeling, but I'm just filling myself up with good, good, good feelings. Just thinking about all the things that there are to love in a room. And it's crazy because it's not easy to find things to appreciate in the beginning. But once you get started, you start, it starts building and building and building. And the craziest thing is when you start to apply that to a person. So you can sit down and make a love list about a person. Sometimes it's a person that you don't like very much. Those are the most influential love lists. But then when you turn that around and then you Think about yourself. You make a love list about yourself. Why don't we do that for two minutes? If you have a phone, a phone, because I find a phone's easiest because you can look at that another time. Why don't you take two minutes, open up the notes on your phone, and make a list. I want you to find 10 things that you love about yourself. And go. <laughs> All right, wrap it up. Can I ask you a question? Who here found that incredibly easy? Look around you. No, but seriously, look around you. I don't know, everyone's like, am I not humble? <laughs> Stay humble. Huh? <laughs> right? So, I don't know, that was maybe 10 people. There's a lot of people here. Who found that hard? Be honest. Oh my God. It's a lot of people. I know. I know. That's hard. Why is that so hard? Why is it hard to find 10 things that we like about ourselves? That's a question, right? And so I think 
that's something good. I'm glad that you have it on your phone so it exists forever. So when you feel like crap, you could look at it. You know, maybe you can keep adding to it over the next while. How many people actually got to 10? That's not everybody. Yeah. Eight? Six? Who only found two things? <laughs> All right. Yeah. I bet somebody around you could find a few things to add to that list. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, these aren't bad superpowers to have. These are exciting superpowers that you could cultivate for yourself. And you can add, you can continue to add more powers. But if you just started off with these basics, learning to live every day, as for yourself, you know? Not in some selfish way, but in a way that really honors who you are and honors the dreams that you have. If you learn to listen to that inner voice that you have and follow it, follow the suggestions. Because for the most part, as I was saying, it's not mean things that the inner voice is trying to tell you. Usually it's trying to help you along. And so it's finding that guidance and using it and following it and trusting in it. And then learning to love yourself and in a way that you maybe have never done before. You know, um, a lot of times I talk about one other way that I've learned to love myself, which is like learning to develop boundaries. Physical boundaries, mental boundaries, you know, personal boundaries. Physically, knowing when somebody is too close knowing when somebody is too much in your business, <coughs> knowing when you don't really need to be around somebody anymore. How many people, we won't turn the camera on you, but how many people have at least one person in their life where, eh, they could probably take or leave? Yeah? <laughs> it's a lot of people, right? Some of us have more than one, right? Maybe you make a list. <laughs> Maybe you make your list. Maybe you make a list of all the people in your life that are awesome. And you, what I found is when I made my awesome list, my awesome person list, I was able to spend more time with those people. I just kind of identified who they were and I spent more time with them. Amazing. And I find that the less awesome people call a lot less awesome less often. That's a good thing. <laughs> Mental boundaries. Really guarding the things that you tell yourself. Knowing when to let ideas in. When certain ideas are there telling you things that aren't true, like that you're not worthy, that you need to stop dreaming about whatever it is you're dreaming about that you shouldn't wake up today, that you shouldn't go for that run, whatever those mental things are that you know aren't really your heart or that's not your gut speaking, knowing when they need to go and thinking about something else. You can only hold one thought in your head at any given time. And then personal boundaries. Kind of like developing schedules and routines for yourself so that you know what it is that you wanna do in life and you achieve them by adding those things to your personal schedule. I think learning how to schedule my life, or schedule, <laughs> I never know which one it is, has been probably the best thing that I've ever done because it helps me, because remember I mentioned how fearful I am? Well, because I'm so fearful, I avoid a whole bunch of stuff. Anybody here hate opening bills? <laughs> right? So I'm, learning so many different things. But that's all from creating and like embracing this whole idea of having courage. Of, and that's the only way that I've been able to do that is by pretending that I'm a superhero. And so I'm a superhero. I'm a superhero. I'm a superhero. Yeah. <laughs> but I really want to say that I suspect you are too. So courage, 
who, what, where, encourage, me, you, what, by, by living, listening, and loving, and where, everywhere, everybody, everything, just doing what you can to appreciate and feel good. Bird flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life. In the sea, you know how I feel. Forever running free, you know how I feel. Blossom all the trees, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new 